Uh, Byron, great to see you. Uh, of course, we're certainly not going to say the phrase that pays, which is, of course, what's up, hot dog. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh. Hot dog. What's up, you guys? It's me, hot dog. Whoa. Hey, hey, hot dog. Hey. Wow. You guys conjured me. All right. <laughs> I'm always happy to be conjured. Now, you, I suspect, uh-huh. have had a pretty impactful uh, 24 to 48 hours. It's, be, it's even been longer than that, man. It's been crazy. My life has been crazy lately. Really? Where, when you were, before we conjured you, where were you? Well, I was at the Shanana house, as a matter of fact. Oh, the compound. Yeah, and um, I was just taking a, a world of shit, as a matter of fact. I was just, uh, man, they were just a taking Jim turns. Jim Belushi-sized world of shit? <laughs> I was taking a Jim Belushi-sized world of shit, man. It was bad. Those guys are real mad at me, man. Real well, mad. What, what happened? Because oh, the wow. last time we saw you, yeah, um, essentially, if I could nutshell it, it uh, you were... <laughs> Your goal is to get Shana Na, the band, the 50, Airsat's 50s tribute band, Shana Na, uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They've been eligible for now four decades at least. It's been right? a long time. And you know they invented the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Shana Na invented the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in a song that they mean. wrote. They wrote a song in 1977 called The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And that's the first time anybody ever heard about a rock and roll hall of fame. The ultimate indignity. Of course. So you think that's what you think Jan Wenner heard that song and was like, yeah, we're doing it. Yes, of course. And not only that, but they predicted the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in that song. And therefore, it's a prophecy. Right. Oh, that's right. Because you, you believe that all of their song lyrics are prophecies. Oh, I know that they are. And if and if that prophecy comes true, then they will all come true. And there will be teen angels and we will find out who wrote the book of love and everybody will get a job. <laughs> Slaves, of course. And the book of love is the fiery book that that God has written of all of the course of human events. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it's going to be fun, but it's <laughs> it's the rapture, essentially. It's is the rapture, man. It's the end times. And all that has to happen to trigger it is for Shana now to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as the prophecy dictates, man. And so your plan was, if I recall, mm-hmm. and please tell me if I'm getting any part of this incorrect, was... You know I will. You had the members of Shana Na legally change their name to Tina Turner. Well, I don't want to... band. Yeah, exactly. They, the individual members kept their own names, but the name of the band changed from Sha Na Na to Tina Turner. And you had found some sort of loophole where uh, Tina Turner had not copyrighted her name. Is that what it was? At, not as a band name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. She, that was a she's real only, loophole she's in there. She's only protected as an individual. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Any <laughs> band could call themselves Tina Turner. She really fucked up. <laughs> and Tina Turner, conversely, could call herself any band. Uh, if Tina Turner wanted to change her name to Rush, uh, <laughs> she could do it. Rush Limbaugh? <laughs> <laughs> she probably could do that. <laughs> Why not? He's not using it anymore. Well, the, so the first sign of trouble came when uh, the uh, Shanana did their gig at the Wild Rose Casino in Emmitsburg, Iowa, and they were billed for the first time ever as Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> legally, you had to. Uh, you, yep. Yeah, well, because that was, and it was a mistake that I made. I had them legally change their name to Tina Turner as a band, not realizing that they had this gig right, right before the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so, oh boy. It, so and did so, people show up expecting to hear Proud Mary and what's love got to do with it? The, the, the theater at the Wild Rose Casino in Emmitsburg, Iowa holds 1,200 people and they had 20,000 people show up <laughs> and, and they were furious that, that the people that took the stage was not Tina Turner, you know, the Tina Turner they expected. And it didn't help that I, because at some point they were like, get out there and do something. I got on there and was like, this is Tina Turner. You are seeing <laughs> Tina Turner. Check the wow. paperwork, man. <laughs> That was the first thing. Did that tip off uh, the the first Tina Turner, Tina Turner Mark One? It made the it made the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Tina Turner's camp kind of aware that something was going on, and so got, they got had put this on their radar. Heightened level of vigilance, and uh, this part of the story is crazy. But we had I don't know if you remember this uh, cowboy. He's a cowboy. Uh, Oh, oh, the author. Oh, Dalton Wilcox. The author Dalton that we Wilcox. have on the show sometimes. You're thinking of Dalton, Dalton Wilcox, Wilcox. The, pod, the podcast host. He's a he, cowboy? 
He is a cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cowboy. He's a podcast host. He had come to be in, in cahoots with us. Uh, I, I'm not sure how, but he said he had come to be in cahoots with our plan. You'd have to ask him how that came about. But anyway, so they, he was a really important guy because he was the guy who was going to prevent Tina Turner from getting to the stage. Oh, oh. how was, yeah. How was he going to do that? I thought that? he wasn't on your side. <laughs> I know he wasn't, but then he came to be. Huh. He came to be. You oh, might want to ask him about it. I don't know if there's a way to summon Dalton Wilcox. I can't. I don't remember. Is there? <laughs> You're going to have you, to help me with that one. <laughs> if you if you text him, he might just come by. Oh, oh well, here's what I will oh, say. I, see. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like he's. In, I know him to be in the area because he's. I think signing books. Probably. Um, and and I was listening to a podcast recently. It was in Andy Richter's backyard. So at least I know he's in L.A. I texted Dalton. And okay. asked him to show up if he can. So I don't know if he's going to, but I, I definitely texted him. So he probably won't. Yeah, yeah he probably I doubt, won't. We'll probably won't. I don't know. It's hard it. getting a hold of him. It's so last minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's and busy. he's, he's, he's been busy taping his own podcast, Bonanas for Bonanza, the confusingly titled show. Uh, I don't know. That title makes sense to me. Does that make sense to you, Byron? It's I love very, the title. It's very it's, hard. It would be very hard to just hear it said and then try and find it. No, yeah, I don't I agree. Think I, think it's, it. I think it's great. I, I, I think almost anyone would try every vowel after the B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You would. Oh, well, if, it did, if the first one didn't work, you'd go I, I have to say, by the way, I, I, I guess I also forgot to unlock this door. I mean, we just conjured you, hot dog, and you just right. appeared. So I, right. let me unlock the door over here and see if well, that... You should also I, 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 you should unlock the gates as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm That's, almost positive you locked them early. That is <laughs> podcast etiquette. Always unlock the gates. Um, all right. So here we go. Let me just, uh, come over here, unlock the door. Hey, God damn it. I'm waiting out here behind your damn door. <laughs> For how long? What are you doing texting somebody and then keeping your door locked when they show up to respond to you? say, come on over here real fast. We need your help understanding something. And then I'm I show sorry. up to a goddamn <laughs> locked door. I apologize, Dalton. I know in the Old West they didn't even have door locks. so No, I... they didn't. Doors would swing both ways. You, you, saloon doors. Everything yeah, was a right. saloon door. Is that right? The only door in the Old West was a saloon door. Everybody knows that. <laughs> That's what I'm used to. I pushed on it and it didn't move. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. I uh, Dalton, thank you so much for coming. I, By the way, uh, Hot Dog is here and, and Byron Denniston over here. Oh, yeah. What's up, you guys? Oh, good. Hello, Dalton. So tell me, Dalton, what what happened the other night? Because we're we're hearing this it's in an almost I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Rashomon, but um, there's got to be a Western equivalent of it. Yeah, but, there is. Uh, somebody will tell me. OK, but um, uh, what happened the other night at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? First of all, rock and roll. I don't know if you're that even interested in that style of music because it's maybe akin to country and Western. Uh, no, I have took no that interest. And bastardized it. Yeah. I have no interest whatsoever in rock and roll music. I think it just about, it tried to murder country music in my opinion, huh. but it failed. Mm -hmm. Country right. music lives on. So what were you doing there? Because you were, you were trying to help hot dog. We're trying to, we're trying to get the, what, what happened the other night. I've had a hard time figuring it out my damn self. So last time we was talking about this, or maybe the time before last, I had gone to murder hot dog. Right. No offense, hot dog. None taken, man. <laughs> with, <laughs> with the, with the hot dog gun made by that guy in Germany. Yeah, that's right. And, I, and, uh, no, he made the bullet. Now he made both. It was a bun gun and a and a and a hot dog bullet. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, Scott. So I come partner. on. I had tried to shoot him the one time, shooting him in the heart, but his that was a decoy heart, and his real heart was down in his thigh. And so I had gone another time to shoot him in the thigh where the heart was, and I did shoot him in the thigh, but somehow that wasn't it in his heart, and that part I still don't understand. Anyway, so I shot him, and I thought I'd killed him, right? And then all of a sudden, I remember you guys saying, Dalton, look out behind you! And then that was the end of that episode. Do you remember oh, that? yeah, I remember. Like, something happened where the tape cut off, or, I, yeah... It, yeah, yeah, it, it was uh, it was crazy. But and, and I, then we never asked about it again, right? That's Dalton, true. We never inquired. Never further. followed up on it. I, which we've was had fine. you on the show since then. Which, that's so crazy. <laughs> I know that is weird, but it was it. Uh, it's fine because it was just some little old man there with a sweater tied around his shoulders and a little cap, and he was. Uh, he he said, "I'm going to hypnotize you," but uh, huh. uh, but I felt that he had failed to hypnotize me. Huh. But then next thing I know. 
I come out of a trance and I have killed 38 people backstage at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse Whoa. in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. And, yeah. And it was a uh, uh, I was being restrained and I barely escaped with my life and my freedoms from there. And so so uh, this this little old man, he's uh-huh. wearing a, a cap, you say, and a sweater over his shoulders. Yeah. Was, was he did he give you a business card at all or? Did he have an accent of any kind? He seemed to be a city slicker. He was a city I'm, slicker. I right, call him yeah. a city slicker for sure. Right. Huh. Wait, was he? Did did he? Was he? Did he ever mention the words uh, theatrical or uh, producer, director? Or, I don't yeah. know about that. But when I asked him, "Who the hell are you?" he he told me his name, and then he followed it with the words theatrical director. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. But I, I think don't this remember. Is, we've talked to this guy. It's. Uh, Dom Dom Herrera? No. Uh Dom <laughs> who's who's in those Fast and Furious movies? Don DeLillo. 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 I, and you hey, watch it. This is this is not good for you. No, no. Well, I I I've, I've gone to uh, get myself reprogrammed by an Indian shaman out there in the desert, so oh, I'm good. fine now. Good, good, good. But for uh, but man, I was mad and I was confused because he said all I know is he says he, I'm only going to hypnotize you, and I says who the hell are you? And he told me Donatella fixes machines, uh, theatrical <laughs> director, or whatever it was. And then hey, I I was like I laughed at him and I went about the rest of my business and. Then and all of a sudden, I wake up backstage at the at the Cleveland thing, and I'm how man, much, oh man. How much time is missing? Because yeah, do, you, do you even remember passed. your last appearance on this show? Were you hypnotized during that? I, I guess I must have been, and I I know it. I'm in a fog for for months at this point. It's been oh months of fog, God. but I'm out of it now because I done had some peyote and uh, all that. Oh, business. good, good. But yeah, trying. I mean, murdering that many people doesn't look so good on the old CV. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the most people I've killed at one time, but. Oh. Uh, I mean, hang on. Let me correct myself. I've never killed a person. I've only killed monsters. Oh, okay. And yeah, so, very important distinction. So these 30-some-odd people were backstage uh, in Cleveland. Were I monsters. have to assume they were. I don't have a specific memory of killing yeah. them, but I think it must have been a, a cabal of mm. uh, creatures from the Black Lagoon. They and, travel in cabals, I've noticed. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's Frankenstein monsters. And Doctors all. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde's. Yep, exactly. And a lot of them was probably invisible. So, right. And, you know, you've got to assume that if there are Frankensteins there, then their brides must be as well. Oh, so. sure. And you got to take care of them brides, too. You don't, you don't have think, that plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think, oh, I'll leave the bride alone. And Every just monster has a plus one, don't they? Uh, well, they, a lot of monsters is trying to find their plus one. So, for instance, Creature from the Black Lagoon, he's trying to drag a plus one down into the lagoon. <laughs> Make her a minus one up he, on well, land. But he doesn't understand. He thinks she can breathe down there, idiot. Oh, man. You know what, Dalton, what might be a great way to, for you to... And I know you're not out there hunting monsters. Nope. They just... You're, they, you're they good just at noticing you, yeah. them. You're right. out in these streets uh, going about your business. if you were right. to create... A dating app for monsters. Uh huh. Uh-huh. They would sign up to for lure it, them. And you could, yes, yes. You, you, it's a honeypot. You could, you could lure them into yep. a scenario where they you could think call they're, it they're like a monster. The monster app. Yeah. Something like that. What yeah. do you mean? It sounds. It's, it's like a, 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 a. What is it? The monster app. It's a graveyard app, you know, hey, something like man. that. I hate that song. Okay. I yeah. fucking hate that song. You hate that song? That really? song makes me mad. Yeah. Matter of fact, Why? I've written I've written a response poem to it. I don't know if you want to talk you, about that now. Wait, you've written a response poem to the, the monster? monster? Yes, Mash? I have. God damn it! Wait, written- wait. So this is because I haven't heard of response poems before. You never heard, heard of response poem? Occasionally, there will be a response song like Danny Aiello's "Papa Just Wants the Best for You" that he sang to Madonna. Oh my God! But Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, a response poem is something that I, I've i never quite heard of. Oh, it's a big thing in cowboy poetry. Uh, sometimes you'll have a, a, an evening of cowboy poetry. It'll be one person uh, does a new poem 
And then the whole rest of the night is just responses to it that have been quickly written. <laughs> People rebutting backstage. all of hastily, points. hastily written response poems. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've had a busy couple of nights. And hot dog, how do you feel about the fact that Shauna Na didn't uh, <laughs> didn't make it? I mean, you know, it's, it's another year where Shauna Na uh, is is not making the prophecies come true and bringing about the rapture. I'm furious, man. It's terrible. And uh, I feel like I don't know what to do now because I tried the Doobie Brothers scheme and the Tina Turner scheme. And I feel like uh, yeah. I'm almost running out of ideas. Can I hey. just stop you for one second, hot dog? Yeah. All right. Because right. something has just occurred to me. All right. All right. The band Sha Na Na is now currently called Tina Turner. Yes, it is. Yes, so it is. you could start the band Sha Na Na. Oh, my God. <gasps> Wait a minute. Why oh do you currently, need all these other guys? Currently, Shana Na is an open band name. Oh my it's God. an open assignment. But you know what I could do? I could make Shana Na full of people who the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is dying to induct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, well you, could, you could just hire people they've already inducted. So you could hire oh. Paul McCartney for this. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you, you could... You know, I can put together a rock and roll Hall of Fame supergroup and call them Sha Na Na. And the and minute that you you finally get the last person, they're already in the Rock of Hall, Hall of Fame. And then Sha Na Na is already in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. But here's what's here's what's hard about this, and this is where it's going to come down to a really difficult personal decision. Hot dog. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you wa- if you want to be in Sha Na Na, it you're the will only mean, person who won't have been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It will mean they will not be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So if your personal dream comes true the prophecy will not but if you are self-sacrificing the prophecy will come true guys this is literally the hardest decision anybody has ever been presented with (laughs) this is impossible i can assemble a group of all rock hall inductees and the prophecy will immediately come true and the heavens will open up and the end times will begin the hardest decision since meryl streep decided whether or not she was going to star in sophie's choice (laughs) I heard she deliberated over that for a long time. Oh, her, in a in a very long hot shower. Her agent a said no, shower. and her manager said yes, and her accountant said yes, and her lawyer said no. Oh, it was man, wild. So, wow. I mean, but I think the band would be so great, Hot Dog. You would get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's probably wow. where you want to go. So you're saying I put myself in the group along with who? Paul McCartney. Ringo. And, and, uh, and, oh, man. Uh, you know, Dave Any Roll. number of the Doobie Brothers that you want, whoever. And, that, yeah. and I'm in the group, too, and we are so good. But then we'd have to wait 25 years, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It might be worth it, man. You know? I mean, like, listen, it's up to you, man. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Uh, Dalton. We, yeah. we end up with you. Are you ready to, I guess, read this poem, response poem, or sing this song? I'm not quite sure what you're going to do. I'm, I think I'll sing it. Uh, and then you guys could come in on the chorus if you okay. figure it out and want sure. to. Or, but if it's too confusing, don't bother. Here we go. This is a response poem called Monster Trash. <laughs> this is the title. Monster Trash. A response poem to Monster Mash. Uh which can be sung to the tune of Monster Mash by Dalton Wilcox, meaning that this song, poem, is by Dalton Wilcox, not Monster Mash, which is by some other son of a bitch. Leo Carpazzi. Leo Carpazzi by Dalton Wilcox. Here we go. And so you you have to imagine the the bubbles and the door creaking. (laughs) Yeah, all right, all right. (laughs) First of all, you started off your song by admitting that you made a monster. That's wrong. You're singing about it, but you ought to be ashamed. Just think of all the cowboys that could end up getting maimed. Your song is trash. Your song is monster trash. It's monster trash. And it curls my mustache. It's monster trash. It's like a bad saddle rash. It's monster trash. Your song is monster trash. Your second verse really made me fume. You let vampires feast in your master bedroom. They're feasting on cowboys, you son of a bitch. I'd like to shoot you in the liver and leave you in a ditch. Your song is trash. Your song is monster trash. It's monster trash. And it curls my mustache. It's monster trash. It's like a bad saddle rash. It's monster trash. Your song is monster trash. Then you talk about Dracula and his son. And that is when I more or less came all the way undone. If the goddamn vampires are learning how to breed, then the cowboys of the West are fucked. 
Mark, guaranteed. <laughs> Can a vampire only mate with one of his kind, or are they coming for our women, which would make me lose my mind? <laughs> you don't address that matter. Guess you didn't have the chance, because all you want to talk about is how the monsters dance. Your song is trash. Your song is monsters trash. It's monster trash, and it curls my mustache. It's monster trash. It's like a bad saddle rash. It's monster trash. So here comes a backlash. No, everything's cool. I'm not really that mad. I love hearing about the fun all them monsters have. Oh, wow. Hell, stop on by the ranch. I'll lay out a party spread. We'll dance around and drink some punch, and then you'll all be dead. Your song is trash. Your song is monster trash. It's monster trash. And here's my weapons cash. It's monster trash. How about a wooden stake gash? It's monster trash. Your song is monster trash. And that's the end. Oh, oh wow. Bravo.